Make sure you keep the meat low. Look at this. Look what coyotes got. Oh, all right, we got one on. Everybody in for a little bit of a kangaroo buffet line. They're really heavy. So much strong. It's like playing tug of war with your dog in the backyard. Only. When I say Tasmanian Devil, I have a good feeling that the first thing that comes to mind is this guy right here, Taz from the Looney Tunes cartoon. One of my favorites as a kid. He was notorious for being ill-tempered, spinning around like a tornado, destroying everything, and talking like this. But what do you really know about this creature? It's one of the most unique marsupials on the planet. Carnivorous, it's a scavenger, and they're famous for having one of the most powerful bite forces based on size per body mass. Today we're gonna find out just how powerful that bite is by entering into a feeding frenzy with an entire pack of Tasmanian devils. But what I ultimately want to determine is whether or not the Tasmanian devil has a softer side. Perhaps that bite isn't quite as loud as its bark. <laughs> The Barrington Tops are unlike any other place in Australia, and they resemble the environment devils naturally roam on the island of Tasmania. Today we will be working alongside Kelly Davis at Aussie Ark, a conservation organization that began in 2011. This initiative was strategically set up and separated from Tasmania, where in recent years, an incurable illness known as devil facial tumor disease has decimated wild populations of devils, driving their species toward the brink of extinction. It's a massive undertaking, but thanks to an incredibly successful and quite active breeding program, a founding population of 44 devils has now produced over 500 healthy joeys. And until a cure is found, this insurance population survival is crucial to the future of this species. More on that and how you can help at the end of the video. But right now, it's time for Dinner with a Devil. Good morning. Hey, how are you going? Good, Cal. Nice to meet you. You too. All right, looks like we've got some prep already set up with our Tasmanian Devil feeding frenzy. I brought Taz with me today. Has a film crew ever brought a Tasmanian Devil to a Tasmanian Devil Feeding frenzy? I think it's a first. Yes, I was hoping <laughs> that that would be the case. What is the buffet line that we have set up for the devils today? So we've got some nice lean natural kangaroo for them. So all the buckets are ready to go. Okay, oh really? I don't have to ch chop anything up? You can if you want to. <sighs> I will definitely avoid cutting up the meat if I have to. I'll just get right into the feeding frenzy. Awesome. Okay, so grab these buckets. Yeah, they can all just right. go on the back of the ute. Oh, wow, yeah, no. Definitely smells like fresh kangaroo. <laughs> Before we get into the feeding frenzy, I just wanna say thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's episode. Now, while I'm on production, I spend a lot of time hiking, searching for wildlife, and doing my best to get the cameras up close for some wild animal encounters. Which is why it's so important that I stay energized, alert, and definitely focused. That's why I drink AG1. Honestly, it's become a part of my morning ritual, whether at home or on the road. Now, when at home, I keep my AG1 inside this canister in the fridge. All you need to do is take a scoop, put it in the water bottle, shake it up, and you're good to go. However, when I'm on the road, that's where these little buddies come in handy. Let me introduce you to the single serving packet. So with the powder poured into water, eight to 12 ounces based on your preference. Me personally, I'm a 12 OZ kind of guy. All you gotta do is shake it up, and you're good to go. Here's something cool. Did you know that AG1 supports your immune health, metabolism, and daily nutrients? Wildly delicious. Now, I'm ready for the adventure. If you'd like to try AG1, click the link in the description below or scan the code in the bottom left to get a year's supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free travel packs. Okay, this is the first gate we must go through and then there'll be a second gate. Let me know just in advance, little safety quick tips before we enter with the devils. Absolutely, so they're all here ready and waiting. They're very keen, they're very, very food motivated. But the thing of it is that the meat, that's what they want. Okay. So a lot of people are really tempted to try and walk to where we need to go and hold the meat high up in the air. If they can't get to the meat, they're gonna get for you. Right. So you wanna just make sure that they're on the meat and you always keep the meat between you and the devil. Yeah, we'll avoid the bites as best as we can. This is our, oh, this is, oh, this is like a whole leg. Oh, yeah, okay. Grab this up and 
Um, all right, I think I'm ready. Let's meet some Tasmanian devils. Let's do it. Oh, hey, fellas. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got meat here. We'll sniff test, nice and fresh. Oh, <laughs> you guys hear them? All right, they're, so they're getting really fired up now, right? Absolutely, they can't wait. So the sense of smell is what's drawing them all in from all the underbrush. Absolutely, they could smell that when we drove it through the main gate. Okay. You ready? All right, here okay. we go. Make sure you keep the meat low. Let them have it. Look at this, look at this. Look what Coyote's got. Oh, all right, we got one on, we got one on. There you go, guys. Everybody in for a little bit of the kangaroo buffet line. They're really heavy. So much strong, it's like playing tug of war with your dog in the backyard. Only, whoa, with a bunch of biting. Ultimate Tasmanian devil tug of war. Woo! All right, coming up on the pole here. And, oh, there you go, guys. Woo! Ah, oh, that's fantastic. All right, Kelsey, we are right here, about as close as you could get to a devil frenzy. Yes. And. Not necessarily in danger at this point. Like you said, they're really focused on the meat. Well, this is the thing. People have this idea about what a Tasmanian devil is, and it is largely affected by cartoons, etc. But, you know, how many carnivores can you eat? Lions, you're not going into a pride of lions as they're tearing apart something. And, and that's what they're focused on. They're not hunters. They're, they're really scavengers. So we're alive. We're fine. So they smell the fact that this is non-living meat, and they say this is exactly what we should be feasting on. And they're, in a sense, the cleanup crew within the environment. Absolutely, they, they perform such an important ecological role in that regard, preventing spread of disease. When we're talking bite force with this animal, where does it rank amongst Australia's mammals? It's actually the strongest closing bite force for any animal for their size. So if you scaled it up, uh, they'd be you know, more powerful than, than a lion or a tiger or a whale or anything like that. Uh, they're only around eight to 10 kilos, but they have the equivalent jaw pressure of a 50 kilo dog. I mean, look at how fast they're just demolishing that meat. And they'll go through the tendon, the skin, the hair, and even the bone. Absolutely, yeah, they, they go for what is quickest, First, so they can get as much food as possible because they don't, they don't really want to share too much. Um, and so that's the muscle. That's really quick and easy for them to do. Uh, and then, you know, the smaller bones that are really easy then start working on that skin and that fur. It takes a little bit more effort. And then that big, thick uh, leg bone, they'll be gnawing on for a little while. So you can see as they're getting excited, their ears are actually getting redder as they're continuing with their meal. So what that is, why they have the red ears, is, you know, for us, if we exert ourselves, our face flushes and, and that's how we cool down. Because they're covered in fur, they can't do that. Except on the ears, you don't have much fur covering. So they've got lots of blood vessels within that area. And so their blood rushes to the ears to help cool them down. So this is something that we see as well. As that food has gotten less, that's when those fights start to break out a little more. They're fighting over those last easy morsels. Well, they're definitely very focused on the meal at the moment. It's impressive to see how quickly they've, they've really worked off all of the meat at this point. Now they're really into just the tendons and the bones. And will they actually digest the bone? They will, yeah. You can actually see it in their in their scat, in their feces, where they've got, uh, it's a paler colour, and that's where they've ingested a lot of that bone. Now, I noticed that their faces are quite gnarled. Is this from, from fighting? I mean, they're, they're hides must be incredibly tough to be fighting each other and biting each other all the time. Yeah, so people think it's over food, but for the most part, the fights in devils occur during breeding. Okay. It's the sort of test of strength, but they're not really too much or very often biting each other, but that's enough for those scars to occur mm -hmm. and enough for the disease to spread through the population as right, well. Right, so when it comes to devil facial tumor disease, that's how it's primarily spread from devil to devil. It sounds like it's more posturing in many instances than it is an actual full-on fight, but that's how the disease is ultimately transmitted. Absolutely, and if you think about how quickly they've just eaten that, if you're spending too long fighting, then you're gonna miss out on food. And so a lot of their little interactions are very brief and a lot of bluff and display, uh, but it is, you know, this disease is spread through their natural behaviors, mm -hmm. what they'd normally be doing. Now that you've seen how quickly they can tear apart flesh, would you like to hold one? 
I think I would love to hold a double. Let's see if I can do that without losing some fingers. Let's go. All right, Cal, so we're gonna get into an enclosure now with a devil that may be a little friendlier. Do I need my bite-proof gloves to snuggle? You should be okay, but just don't quote me on that. Okay, <laughs> we'll see what happens. And we're gonna be meeting with Sandy. Yeah, Sandy or Sandra D. She's one of our ambassador devils. So okay. she's a lot more humanized and uh, usually enjoys a, a little cuddle. Okay, well, this will be the softer side of Tasmanian devils. We've seen what they look like ferocious. I see her over there. Let's see if we can make friends. All right. This is actually her brother, Danny. Oh, this is Danny. This is Danny or Danny Zuko. That is like the quintessential field guide specimen devil right there. So then this must be Sandy. This is Do you Sandy. You want us to go back here into the shade? You just, you just grabbed onto her, <laughs> <laughs> just like that. Okay. <laughs> Since she was really, really little, she loves a little bit of a comfort bite. So that's what she'd be doing with mum, just holding on and making so, sure that she's safe and has that connection. So she might do that with your clothing or your fingers or something like mm -hmm. that, um, but there shouldn't be any aggression to it. She just wants to feel nice and comfortable. But how cool are those feet? The pads are incredible. I mean, it feels a little bit like a raccoon paw. It's like if a raccoon and a badger combined together and this was their paw, that's exactly what it would be. Yeah. She's right. so sweet. You ready? Right, let's see. I'm ready. I'm ready. Hi. And probably keep her away from your face. Yeah. Just in case. <laughs> just in case. Oh, Sandy. Hi, buddy. Oh, yep. There's the little comfort, comfort chew on the jacket. Yeah, you chew away on the jacket. Totally cool with me. Totally cool. Yep. That's a zipper. Very nice. Yeah, she's so soft. The bristliness of the coat is really cute. All right. Let's just crouch down right here. Let's see if she'll hang out with us for a second. Hi, baby. All right. So let's talk for a second about the conservation work that you guys are doing here at Aussie Arc. When we were in the middle of the frenzy, we talked a little bit about devil facial tumor disease, but why is it so important for you guys to be creating a contingency population of these animals right now? If the devils go extinct in Tasmania in the wild, so does the disease. Mm -hmm. And so if you have that insurance population, you can repopulate. And so that's, <laughs> that's where uh, Aussie Arc came in, or, or Devil Arc as we used to be and we were a dedicated breeding facility for Tasmanian devils. You know, we have 200 here, so that's, you know, more than, more, don't do that, no, more than like double, sharing. hello, more than double the carrying capacity worldwide as it was previously. Mm -hmm. So in, in doing this, you guys are ensuring that devils will never go extinct. They're not gonna go the way of the thalassine. And this population will ensure that no matter what happens in the wild in Tasmania, devils will always be a part of our planet. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, Cal, it certainly was an amazing experience getting in today with the devil feeding frenzy and then getting to see this softer side of a creature that has such a ferocious reputation. I mean, Sandy here has just been snuggling for multiple minutes in a row. I don't want to let her down, but she definitely wants to just get back in and run around in her enclosure. Thank you so much for having us out today. This was awesome. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, Sandy, I think it's time for lunch. What do you think? It takes a massive amount of dedication to care for this population of devils. And if you would like to be a part of this ongoing effort, visit Aussie Ark's website and discover how you can help preserve the future for these adorably ferocious creatures. Who's ready for the centipede bite? Don't forget to mark your calendars. April 10th at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, I will be going live on YouTube to take on this insane experiment. It's the craziest thing I will have ever done, but all money raised will support Save the Horns.